and welcome to the launch of the 2021 Winchester Poetry Festival. My name is Jane Bryant and I am the new chair of Winchester Poetry Festival. This was a role I was invited to take up recently following my becoming a trustee in the latter half of last year and following Stephen Boyce's decision to step down as chair. It is an immense privilege to do so. Indeed, I'm very conscious of the responsibility that comes with this, but also the fact that I am following two tremendous previous chairs and founding trustees, Robert Hutchison, who so sadly died in 2017, and Stephen Boyce, who I am delighted to say has agreed to remain as a trustee, at least for the time being. Indeed, Winchester Poetry Festival has a really wonderful team of trustees and volunteers and staff, and is our pleasure and delight today to launch the 2021 festival. We will shortly hear from Festival Artistic Director, Sasha Dugdale, about the artistic vision for the festival and some of the featured poets. Stephen Boyce will then provide a few more insights and details, and I will then round off with some logistics. But before we do this, I'd like to say that this year's festival is one with a dynamic difference. As you know, we were unable to deliver a festival last year. We have decided this year to deliver a stretched festival, a series of monthly poetry shots. These will be online events, including workshops and seminars and conversations on one day per month, starting in June and culminating in a live festival weekend in Winchester in October. So I'm now going to hand over to Sasha Dugdale, our festival director, to tell us more. Hello and welcome to the Winchester Poetry Festival launch. My name is Sasha Dugdale and I'm the artistic director. That means I program the festival and I'm also a poet and translator myself. Thank you first of all for being here and for supporting us over what's usually called these unprecedented times. As you'll know, we had to cancel the Poetry Festival last year and this year we're making up for that very keenly felt loss, well for us anyway, with a hybrid program of events. We'll have a series of monthly digital poetry days easily accessible from your PC at home. And fingers crossed, we'll make a return to live events in October with some safe and enjoyable readings in Winchester and Southampton. I'll talk about these in a little more depth in just a moment so you can make decisions about what you might like to see or participate in. But firstly, a little bit about the guiding principles of this year's festival work. It felt very important to us that we didn't simply reprise last year's cancelled festival. It would have been really impossible anyway, but it just felt wrong. These are new times, they're different times, and they, they seem to demand a very different approach. We've all been starved of community and togetherness and warmth in lockdown. So we wanted to go back to some of the founding values of the festival. It's a local and very grounded community festival with a really big and even international reach. So that meant working with our partners in renewed relationships, and it meant inviting some particularly beloved poets back to nourish us. For the monthly digital days, we've really stressed interaction that is between performers and workshop leaders and community groups and between you, our audience. So each poetry day begins with writing workshops and we have a parallel series of writing for well-being workshops with trustee poet and mentor John Sayers, as well as a reading group who'll be looking at the work of the poets that we're inviting to perform and we're showcasing. This is led by the Hampshire Poet in Residence and award-winning poet, Catherine Bevis. For the online readings, we've opted for sessions which are part discussion, part reading, as we felt this really suited the Zoom format best and compensated a little for what might seem otherwise like quite a distanced experience. The poets we're looking at and talking to have the chance 
to discuss the poems, to talk around them and about them and offer unique insights into their creative processes. We felt that this gave our digital readings a different profile and a different attraction to the straight live readings, and we hope you'll agree. By the way, all the events will be captioned and all the poems will be displayed on screen as the poet reads. We'll also be linking to other online resources as much as possible. I can't give you the entire program here and now, but it's all online on the Winchester Poetry Festival site, and you can browse the different events at leisure there. However, I'll mention one or two things just to whet your appetite. On June the 12th, we kick off with a reading and discussion between me and Joyelle McSweeney. Joyelle is an American poet and a great lover of Keats, and her new collection begins with a beautiful crown of sonnets dedicated to John Keats. So we discuss Keats together, we discuss the perilous state of the planet, tuberculosis, contagion, disease, the Hadron Collider, chilly spring, and whether if Keats had had a drone, he would have looked down into the Grecian urn from above. Festival trustee and poet Stephen Boyce interviews and chats to T.S. Eliot winner Jen Hatfield and debut, uh, and debut poet Jason Allen Paysant about poetry that engages with the natural world, with wilderness, with race and belonging in July. We have a talk by Will May of Southampton University on Sylvia Plath with readings of her letters by Juliet Stevenson. For the live festival in October, we'll have a spectacular opening reading by Paul Muldoon and Claire Pollard, and a retrospective from one of the UK's best loved poets, Patience Agbarbi. She'll be reading from Telling Tales and The Refugees' Tale from The Refugees' Tales Project and talking about it. There is so much else on the menu, but I'll stop there and hope I've infected you with something positive and enthusiasm for poetry and this year's festival programme. Thank you so much for listening, and I really dearly hope to see you at one of the events before too long. Thank you. Sasha has done a wonderful job in putting together this year's programme, along with festival manager Madeline Smith. And I really think that it's going to be the biggest and best that we've offered so far. It's this combination of online and real world activity that means that we can present more poets, we can introduce more people to the joy of poetry um, and to this very wide range of activity that we've got on offer from workshops and readings to all kinds of conversations between poets and with poets. We'll be offering more workshops this year. So um, writing for well-being and also uh, writing the craft of writing as we've done before, but more of them. So this time there'll be opportunities to work with the likes of Andrew McMillan, Rebecca Goss, Jonathan Davidson, some wonderful poets and great tutors. So that's another opportunity not to be missed. It's full of excitement and I just, I just can't wait for it to, to get started. One of the things that particularly excites me, of course, is the fact that we have this uh, poet on the high street, our first community heritage uh, residency in Winchester. Uh, and we're going to bring as our resident poet, John Seagrave, AKA Johnny Fluffy Punk, who's going to unearth and talk to people about their memories, their interest in the, the heritage that surrounds us all on the high street. So street names, uh, shop signs, um, some of those familiar monuments that we kind of uh, recognize, but we don't really know what's the story behind them. And we want to hear about people's ideas about that. We want to talk to people about um, what really excites you and, and what memories you have of Winchester from days gone by. And that will form the basis and the inspiration for a really exciting community poetry po project with poems on the high street, in shops, on the pavement, maybe, you know, um, it's going to be a very exciting, very public uh, and community based activity running right through the summer and into the autumn to combine with the festival. And that's one of the things I think the, the festival, because it is this stretched festival, has so much to offer. 
Uh, I'm really excited about uh, the conversation that I'm going to be having uh, with Jen Hadfield and Jason Allen Pazant when they have read uh, online uh, in July. Uh, we have Will May's wonderful uh, Robert Hutchison lecture, which will be on the subject of uh, Sylvia Plath and Stevie Smith and the relationship between them. That just is intriguing to me. Um, and so many more things to offer. And I think the, the festival weekend itself, the live real world festival, when we're back in the Discovery Center, will include some wonderful highlights, including um, the Winchester Poetry Prize, prize giving event with Jacqueline Safra. And if those are events or any, past events or anything to go by, I think we're going to have some you know, wonderful uh, poems again that we can share with an audience uh, and also publish uh, in an anthology. Those have been remarkably successful and intriguing uh, events, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, but also conversations between people like Jericho Brown and Ray Ant Raymond Antrobus. Uh, there's uh, Liz Berry and Romelin Ante. And a very big event for us, two uh, events which will feature Paul Muldoon, uh, a reading uh, and also a conversation uh, in Things Being Various, that wonderful conversation with John Sayers in which he will bring uh, five objects that have inspired him or been meaningful to him uh, in his life and in his writing. So you can see there's a, there's a huge amount to choose from um, on both online and in the real world. Uh, and I think, uh, as I say, this will be perhaps the best and biggest of Winchester Poetry Festival's offering since we started in 2014. Can't wait for it. again and thank you so much to Sasha and to Stephen. I do hope that this has excited us all and that uh, you're keen to book for some of our fabulous events. Full details can be found on the Winchester Poetry Festival website including booking arrangements and this is at www.winchesterpoetryfestival.org and do navigate yourself to the What's On page. Details of this will also appear right at the end um, of this uh, launch. Um, and do book soon because our first set of events is on the weekend of the 11th and 12th of June. I look forward enormously to meeting many of you at what we are intending will be our live and final weekend of festival events in October in Winchester following this incredible online monthly series. And please do let Madeline Smith, our excellent festival manager, know if you have any queries. And again, her details will appear shortly. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy the online journey of poetry, exploration and inspiration that the festival will take us all on and keep safe and well. Thank you very much. <laughs>